Good morning, everyone. This is Xiao Talk Show. Today is September fifteenth, Sunday, San Francisco time, one o'clock p.m. Yes, I am alive. Let's pop out the chat and、uh, let's see what we're gonna talk about. So. Yesterday I did a video on CSS, my experience with CSS and web design. So that's one hour. That's eighty、uh, minutes talking about CSS and web design stuff.、Uh, it's interesting, but in the beginning, six minutes or、uh, seven minutes of the video, I played Bach's music, and that's a mistake. Because then Google told me they have automatic algorithms. They told me that you know they are I am infringing the rights you know of some company. You know it's all automatic. They have algorithms. So I have a option. You know if you don't do anything, then、uh, Google you know according to the what. Google says they will introduce ads. You know the ad money goes to them, even though I don't have ads. You know I don't have ads turned on. So that's one option according to the Google page, or I can remove those audio, those、uh, infringing part of the music, and they have a button. You know you just click, they will automatically remove it. So I clicked.、Uh, And、uh, however, there seems to be some software glitch. So it, it appears that one part is removed, but the other part is still there. So I have to do it again yesterday.、Uh, I have to do it later on today. And also, for some reason that is、uh, known to me, the chat, you know, the chat box is not available. It's、uh, in the beginning it shows, but then later on it 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 says it's not available. I do not know what is the reason for that.、Uh, it may be related to this music copyright thing. I don't know, and possibly it could be because someone, Melcat, there. If you are there, you know, don't mention sensitive words. Swearing is okay, but yesterday, you know, don't. <laughs> You know, don't swear. Like you know, it it、uh, does bad to my uh, video uh, because Google. You know, there's nothing I can do. So so avoid swearing. Just try to replace them with some other words, okay? Or ob obfuscate it, okay? <laughs> obfuscate swearing words.、Uh, and but yesterday someone mentioned there's a political topic. We didn't we didn't talk about politics, but however. Uh, someone mentioned some words, so possibly that's a reason.、Uh, it's a big time thing, you know. One of the political guys is mentioned. So am I? Good morning, am I? Good morning, battles. Number ten. Oh, okay.、Uh, good morning, Kathy. Great to see you, Kathy. Kathy speaks Chinese. That's Fantastic saga. <laughs> How should I call you, Kathy? Do you have a Chinese name? So many people know me as in Chinese as that.、Um, uh, that pre pretty means me pretty much means a、uh, brother sa. You know, because in Chinese you, you know, in Chinese culture or Asia in in general, you have. You know, you respect elders, elders, or your parents, or your grandparents, or your or your ancestry is kind of、uh, important. You, you know, it's built in into the whole culture. It's built in into the language. So when you, so you have different terms to address. You know, people who are elder. There's also always different terms. You know, distinguishing older and younger. You know, between brothers and sisters, you have a word for older brother, you have a word for younger brother, or older sister, younger sister, and so on. You know, so in 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 Chinese culture, typically that's、um, God, <laughs> Dion. Don't mention that word. Don't mention that word. I got you know the 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 comments got、uh, removed yesterday. Okay, so I'm gonna delete this comment. Okay. 
um, you know, yeah, let's, you know, let's not mention that, um, well, good morning, Dion, <clears throat> and thank you, Dion, so much for the, for your Patreon, uh, because I, I looked the, yesterday on my Patreon account, so some people over the past half a year or a year, you know, have contributed a few hundred dollars, so thank you, Dion, for that, and, and many others, and, um, you know the that guy that guy you know that guy that guy who got um you know let's not, let's not talk about that that guy who yeah let's not talk about that so you know youtube chat now this this is a different okay you know i noticed there's something changed with this uh live stream chat apparently it the chat you know like before the video begin you can chat right you can chat to me or, and i can reply but however it uh, it looks like the chat will uh, when the video begin whatever is before the chat will be raised same thing when the video ends so so when when for example today the when the video ends you guys can usually say goodbye, you know, but usually that that doesn't show, because the moment I click end the video, that uh, uh, got removed. So is that uh, rot thirteen? So <laughs> Michael, Michael has this rot thirteen. Let's see, rot thirteen region. Can you read rot thirteen without conversion? No, I cannot. I need to, I need conversion, uh, but I never thought of that. Perhaps you can learn. That's interesting. So for those of you who don't know, Rot thirteen is the most ancient encryption uh, uh, system. That is, you for example, let me show you. This is called uh, Caesar's encryption. See uh, how they call it. Okay, so let's begin talking. We have two topics actually, number 10 and number uh, 506. Uh, 5. Okay, so hold on a second. Since, uh, so let's go to, first of all, let's go to our talk show page, show in browser, page down, page down, page down, and today's, uh, this, this one is today. Uh, there's something I want to say, and the uh, rot thirteen. Now, uh, let's talk about encryption a little bit, okay? Now, I have a tutorial, of course. I have tutorial on everything. I have a tutorial on uh, cryptanalysis, a basic introduction. Uh, where do you find that? You go to uh, Tech Review uh, TCP/IP. Let's see if it's there. There it is. Okay, public key cryptography for beginner. Now this is this article is nothing technical. It's actually it's just an introduction of the concepts of the terminology of how how it works in general. Public key cryptography. Now ciphers, plain text cipher text. Okay, a, a method of encryption. You know there are many methods of encryption. You have, in general, you have symmetric key category of encryption. Then you have public key uh, cryptography, which is very popular in the past 30, 40 years. And so you, so you have categories of. In, so all these are encryption methods. You know ways to scramble text. So. So encryption method, they are called ciphers. Okay, it, uh, technically they are called ciphers. So cipher, cipher, a cipher means a encryption method. You know, so we have many ciphers. Now plain text is the text you you want to encrypt. You know, before y you want to make it into a secret. And cipher text is after encryption. You know, you you take the plain text, you apply a cipher to it you got a encrypted text that's called cipher text now ciphers you know one of the most basic encryption methods ciphered is is called um, substitution cipher 
So how does that work? That is like this. OK, let me show you. Uh, let me show you. OK, so for example, if you have this, if you change A to N, B to O, C to P, um, uh, actually, that that's uh, whipped. What's going on? Okay, so a a to b, for example, b to c, c to d, and z to a. Okay, th this this kind of encryption is called substitution. So you just replace every letter by some other letter. Now this method encryption is called. There's a name. It's it, this is called Caesar's cipher. Okay, I don't have, I didn't show here, but the gen, the modern name is substitution cipher. Okay, you know, you substitute words or letters, but one of the most simple one is called um, Caesar's cipher, I believe. There it is, Caesar's. You see the picture, A to N. Okay, this is rot thirteen. So A to N, Caesar cipher. So for uh, and one of them is called rot 13 that means rotate 13 places a replaced by n b replaced by o where does n come from n is basically the 13th letter so b is the second letter then b becomes o o is the 15th letter you know you you you, sub, you know you substitute substitute like that and in emacs there is a built-in command uh, called rot 13 for example i can I can select this, I call the command rot 13 region, enter, you see N becomes A, o, be o becomes B. They actually become reversed because you see English got 26 letters. So if you go by 13, that means they doesn't doesn't matter which way you encrypt or decrypt, they are still, they, they are kind of the same uh, pair, A to N, N to A. But if you do rot 14, then it's going to be different. So rot 13 is kind of a popular way to, for example, if you are posting a puzzle, puzzle, you know, a math puzzle, and you want to show the answer, you can rot 13 it. Then people, you know, so people don't accidentally read the, read the answer. And you know, rot 13 is simple because you know it's reversible. I mean, it's it's. All substitution ciphers are reversible, but rot, rot 13 has the properties properties such that uh, the way to encrypt and the way to decrypt is the same. You just rotate 13 places. So that's about rot 13, and that's about Emacs. Okay, so so let's see. So let's read the comments. Okay, so many comments. Anyone use uh, Y snippet? I talked about that. I, d I don't use it. I, I used for the first five years, but then I just used a uh, brief. I, I talked about that in some video. A brief is more powerful. <coughs> okay, let me check. Let me read the comments. Okay, let, and let's see. Uh, let's see what is topic 10. Uh, topic 10. Okay, I need to stop this I'm wasting my CPU. Okay, topic five is explain JavaScript object and uh, JavaScript OOP in depth. About two days ago, we did that one. We did that one in depth, and I think it's a very good one. So if you are want if you want to understand JavaScript OOP in detail, check out that uh, video about two days ago, two or three days ago. Uh, JavaScript object and OOP in depth, and uh, so we we so JavaScript is a huge topic. So that we we talked about that for ninety minutes, but but we can continue. So Bartholomew says you know topic number five, so we can continue on that, and Bartholomew says plus more explanation of class in Python. Yeah, we can do that. Um, Yes. So, Bartholomew, did you watch that video? I suppose did you? I, maybe you did. Uh, we can do that. And what's number ten? Number ten, GoLand. Write a script that validate matching brackets. Okay, this is also a great topics to talk about. 
uh, but we uh, I'm not sure you know I'm thinking maybe next time so which topic between these two so anyone have more opinions like say which one you prefer so we, we, we can do that for Golan I'm thinking maybe we should do a dedicated one uh, because Golan for, for Golan that topic you know write a Golan script that validate matching brackets you know all type of matching brackets square brackets round bracket curly braces and the mini Chinese brackets and I also have a Emacs script that does that um, you know that's gonna be live coding so maybe we should do that another day Uh, what is uh, what's with the streaming time in last two days? <laughs> Battles. Well, it changes. or so it changes often. You know, I was sticking to. Uh, it changes. So, you know, because my sleeping sleeping schedule, you know, changes all the time. And also, I was thinking, you know. Uh, because if I have some other time, then people in other places, uh, in China, for example, they could watch it when uh, live. Uh, so let me check, read the comments. Okay, so is there a new feature that lets you cut off stuff out of the video after uploading? Isn't there a new feature? I don't know if it's new or not, but YouTube provides a simplified editor, video editor but I don't know how to use it you know I've never edited video before you know you have to kind of learn how to edit video uh, Michael says I mean still would love to know how, how compiler works because really have no idea and kind of want to get to higher level of understanding uh, okay, yeah, so comp how compiler works, that's another topic. <laughs> okay, so we got three topics. Um, we already, we kind of already started random. Let's see what, you know, uh, we talked about 17 minutes. Okay, so I'm, I'm, not, I, I'm not sure. So if you have opinions, say it, okay. Good morning, Zitron. Skio Askey says, topic suggestion, what are your thoughts on bash or shell scripting? Uh, okay, th those are no good. <laughs> shell scripting, those are, bash shell scripting, those are dead, long dead technology. Nobody, well, people actually still use that, especially uh, for installations, but uh, you shouldn't use it. You know, Perl totally replaced it. 20 years ago, at least 20 years ago, Perl totally replaced Bash or Shell scripting 20 years ago. Why? Because uh, Perl is already built in, you know, it's out of box in Linux. You know, Perl is kind of the Unix philosophy school of thought, you know, they are kind of the same community. So Perl 20 years ago is in every Linux box by default, you know, out of the box. And Perl is more powerful than Shell or Bash more concise and it's actually a general purpose language and you you know you have data structures you have list you have hash just just Perl is the same class like python ruby okay so Perl is far more powerful flexible and easy easy to use and the 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 Perl is very the syntax is uh hated by many people but still it's better than bash and, and shell okay so Perl and it's no slower it's in fact faster uh, than bash or shell so you actually should just use Perl you know bash and shell scripting they should be long dead you just use Perl but however Unix people they you know in my opinion they are idiotic in my opinion Unix should be replaced you know Perl should replace bash scripting long ago 20 years ago but people don't do that they still do bash you know especially the Ruby you know Ruby has this um, anyway you know back in 10 years ago you have this any anyway so the Unix people they didn't they didn't think of that way so they still write you know bash and shell scripts for installation scripts <clears throat> 
So today, bash is still around, you know. Uh, bash should be used only for interactive, you know, interactive shell. That's the only purpose. <coughs> anyway, so, yeah, there is, there is no good reason to still use bash. So skill ASCII skill, skill ASCII says, I'm currently writing a really simple script to handle all my mouse key binds. Uh, for that, on Linux, you mean on Linux, right? Linux sucks so bad. You know, I have an article about that. So, okay, so I think today we're going to just talk at random then. So no more opinions about that. Uh, so Bethel Mule questions, but is Perl as easy as Bash? Yes. Well, you, Yes, actually, you, you know, it, it depends on what you mean. Of course, Bash is smaller language, so of course, Bash is simpler, but actually not really. <laughs> Bash, Perl is far more powerful, far more, and Perl is basically just a Bash. Perl, uh, you know, Perl, Perl syntax is basically just shell scripting. The same kind of thought, the same kind of, you know, pretty much all the same, including, you know, the, the variable thing, and, you know, the, you know if uh so okay so let me show you uh so michael says every language you already know is the easiest no not really you know lang learning a uh, language is actually not that easy but you know i but you know to be to be uh, you know to be fair i think it's fair to say pro is not more difficult than bash i mean because they are almost like the same thing, okay? I mean, truly, because I know Perl very well. Perl is a language I know, at, you know, at least 20 years ago. 20 years ago, I haven't been coding Perl for more than 15 years. Uh, Perl, but, you know, but once you know it, something so well, you know, I know I coded in a, in a co I, I coded Perl in a company for four years, writing uh, e-commerce software, you know, servers. So I have a Perl tut tutorial. So this page is one page overview. I mean, this one page teaches you basically all the Perl. I mean, Python and Ruby is still easier to learn. But anyway, if you do shell scripting, you know, you, there's no reason to do bash. But today the story is again different. I wouldn't, I would not recommend, you know, oh, learn Perl and don't do, don't learn bash. I, I do not recommend that. 20 years ago, I recommend that. Today, no. Why? Because there's more reasons. You know, things change in society. Social reasons. Why? So why do I not recommend Pearl, Pearl anymore? Because Pearl today is dead. Okay, it's dead. <laughs> you, if you are going to learn Pearl, you are learning a dead language. There are still jobs, you know, one or two, you know, but Pearl is dead. So that so so we we are back to the situation you have bash bash for installing script for you know some config thing you know you, you are back to that state uh you know of situation but okay but still i so i so nobody use bash today well people still do but i still recommend don't use bash don't 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 do bash okay don't do you know people what people do you do you run you, you can use ruby or you can use Python, okay? Don't, you know, there's no good reason to use Bash, okay? There is no good reason to use Bash. Today, use Ruby, uh, Python, okay? Uh, or Perl. Or Perl, but Perl is dead. Okay, so so Ruby, Python, they are far more powerful and simpler than Bash. Um, but however, the industry, I mean, if you work in, in an industry, it's still the kind of, ba use, using Bash for installing script is still common. For example, the most, you know, there are so many installation scripts that's written in Bash. That's one of the, that's the most idiotic, okay? Uh, let me show you Ruby. So Ruby, at least 10 years ago, I think still, still so today, you have these, um, you have these, what's it called? 
Okay, I think I removed that um, gem. So Ruby gem rake. You know, Ruby has its own jargons. IRB, IRB is the interactive Ruby command line interface. Interactive Ruby, so IRB. So for example, in shell, uh, you can type I, uh, IRB, okay? Now we are in Ruby. Uh, can you guys see it? Yes, okay. So for example, 1 plus 3, you got 4, okay? Now exit. And Ruby has, you know, IRB gem, gem, so Ruby gem is a tool for installing managing Ruby packages. Gem is written in Ruby. Uh, you know, it, so gem is like R, you know, R, RPM of JavaScript, you know, and, and other languages. So gem, Ruby gem. So rake, rake is like make in Unix, you know, like make, make file, you know, rake is written in Ruby, Ruby's version of rake. And make is in, uh, Anyway, anyway, so Ruby has rake, Ruby has this uh, bunch of jargons, bundler, bundle, then Ruby has uh, rdoc, rvm, okay, rvm. Yeah, rvm is the one I want to talk about. So let's go to Ruby, um, copy the path, paste it here, linkify, then go to the file, go to the directory, uh, search for RVM because I have a article on that. Okay, RVM is one of the most idiotic. I don't like them. You know, I hated them. In back in 2012, I was learning Ruby for like two months. I I did learn Ruby for two months, but I never actually code anything much on, in in Ruby. Back then, I was thinking Ruby is going to be my main language. F you know, switching from Python and before that switching from Perl, but uh, that never happened. So, so right now, if I want to do general scripting of industrial languages, I use GoLang. So anyway, Ruby, Ruby, you have this RVM. RVM is kind of a uh, uh, tool that gives gives you a independent, manage independent Ruby environment. Like, like the you know, uh, you know. Anyway, independent Ruby environment. <coughs> so you can have different Ruby versions, installations, and do different set. You know, each one has its own libraries. You know, whatever libraries you install, so you can you know for different projects. Um, and Ruby RVM. You know, when you go, when you want to install Ruby RVM, this is fashionable. Like ten years ago, they tell you. They tell you to just run a, uh, you know, copy and paste this line of code and run it in shell. You know, it's uh, extremely idiotic. It's a security problem. Uh, where do I find it? Did they change that? Okay, Cher Ruby is better. Cher Ruby is a alternative. So anyway, back then, you know, Ruby, when you go to RVM website, okay, here, I think. Uh, you know what they tell you is any okay somewhere somewhere anyway back then on their website what they tell you is they tell you okay to install RVM you just copy this line of code and paste it in your shell and run it okay that's wait is that right apt get install uh, build essential no not that one uh, this one this line this line that's what they tell you to use you know curl dash l and uh, URL and bash, pipe it to bash. This is a fucking idiotic practice, you know. And this this has been popular around uh, 2012, 2010, 2008 to 2000. I don't know if they still do that. So a lot of projects, you know, when you want to install, they just tell you to copy a shell script line, a single line, and just run it. So what this do is that this will do is that it will fetch the bash script it will fetch it and it'll just run it so basically if if they have a bash script that that says delete the whole directory delete your <laughs> delete your entire life then you just oh you know you, you know you just run it that you know that's that's bad and that's what these idiot millennial generation of coders are doing 
I think these kind of thing are popular in Ruby community and JavaScript because, you know, a, a programming language and its community are often associ associated with the kind of they they do have some kind of a age group uh, generation. So, for example, Ruby, Python, they are kind of the millennial generation coders, and the thinking, the ideas, you know, the style, you know are different for example from power programmers from C from Emacs users typically okay this is general okay of course many of you are uh, millennial young people you don't think it that way but anyway so Ruby Python you know I mean Ruby and not Python Ruby mostly Ruby JavaScript they most of their people are kind of this new millennial generation and they tends to be these kind of people they don't really know uh, details about algorithms they, they don't they don't care they don't they are not interested in those kind of things they are not you know they tend to be just library users and you know follow <laughs> follow follow instruction kind of people Ruby I, I realized you know once I get got into the Ruby community so Ruby you know they have this uh, shell script you know uh, that's no good okay so let me copy that. Th this page is pretty go old. This is from 2012. This kind of things change all the time. So, so I wouldn't say this page is still good. But you know that gives you it becomes history. So this becomes a historical document. Like 10 years later, then you'll see. Oh, this is how they do things back then, 2012. <laughs> Installing Ruby, Ruby RVM. And Ruby RVM is 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 uh, stinks in every way. You know, I try to use it. It stinks in every way, and it's by you know millennial generation. Uh, you know, th but the people are good though because you know here's what they do. Like, okay, so if I have a Ruby RVM question, like I try to install it I, and I run into some uh, error, for example. I go to Twitter, right? Twitter is the you know social network popular in uh, with millennials. So I post the question. Oh, hey, does anyone know? You know, usually talking to my followers. Does anyone know this error in Ruby RVM? Then, you know what they do is that the Ruby RVM guy. You know, they they have two guys, and they 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 are they are sitting on Twitter. They watch everything. They you know they have a search for RVM all the time automatic or otherwise so whenever they see a question they go answer it <laughs> that's what they do and this is the way actually this is a uh, SEO you know search engine optimization this is one of the way one of the technique to grow your audience to make you know whatever you do popular so they they got this guy it's well you cannot say it's bad it's a nice guy okay you know, he just sit on Twitter or Facebook or you know the social networks, and whenever he see a question, he answer it, and you know kindly, very well. So he did that. You know, every time I complain, you know, every time I find this 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 R V R V M fuck, you know, I don't like their design. They do, you know, I don't, you know, it's I in my opinion, it's you know bad in many ways. So every but every time you post a question, this nice guy answers. <laughs> you know politely that's a that's a issue okay that's a problem you know so I uh, usually it's helpful okay so that solves your problem especially when you are working for a company you know we are you know you need to get things done then you saw the answer it's extremely helpful so I'm grateful for that but meanwhile that also stifles any criticism you might have but because now now he answered my question now I cannot you know fucking you know, uh, flame the fuck of RVM anymore because <laughs> you got this nice guy answer your question. What are you gonna do? So this is a social issue. Okay, this is this is it's 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 just the way things are. It's not not a problem. It's not exactly a problem you can solve. You know, but then you have to kindly, maybe possibly kindly, if you want to criticize, then you have to possibly kindly criticize. Anyway. Uh, it turns out, I, I, as I learned, a lot of people don't like RVM either. So anyway, RVM back then, like in 2012 at least, it was like the number one solution. It's like the most popular. 
tool for for you know managing in independent Ruby installations. So that's about RVM. We we were talking about that because we were talking about um, uh, we were talking about shell scripts. So we got so many questions. So I'm gonna get into that, but I, there's other things I want to mention. Okay, so so that's about Ruby. Then Clojure is the same thing. Okay, they got a shell script which I despise. Clojure in Clojure you got <laughs> okay okay um, this topic. Uh, Israel, you would be interested because I know you are doing closure stuff. You are into closure. Anyway, we were talking about shell script. So let me mention this closure Lenogen, which is a pain in my ass. Okay. Closure, closure. You, you got the Lenogen script. So what is it? It's a installation script for closure. It's not just installation. It's for installing closure. Uh, um, well, mostly it's a Closure library manager. Okay, so for example, on Linux, you use uh, apt-get. You know, apt, apt-get, apt-search. You know, you have apt and other packages. That's for managing uh, Linux pack packages. You know, libraries, whatever. You use that all the time. In JavaScript, you have uh, RPM, right? In Closure, you have this one tool, Linux. Lenogen is written by this hacker, this well-known hacker. Uh, uh, also, he's a great hacker, though. He's a great programmer. He's he he his name is he goes by Technomancy. Uh, anyone knows his name? Uh, type it. Okay, I I forgot at the moment. Uh, so Ruby. So hold on a second. So let me write down what we uh what doing. So closure. Technomancy, and I know him. I know what he does a lot. He so he created the, he he did many things. Okay, so he's a hacker. Technomancy is a great hacker. Okay, he's a hacker. I you know I normally I would say a great programmer, but he's not. He's a pro great programmer, but however he's the, he's one of those guys who are into the Unix philosophy thing. Okay, he's that type of people. So you call him hacker. So he he's a um, he's a Elis Emacs expert, Crozier expert. He's also a um, uh, Crozier expert. He's also a Lua uh, Lua expert. He is also a keyboard uh, build. Building expert. Okay, he built the keyboard. So let me show you. Uh, what's the name? Uh, don't let Lennon. You you cannot when you do closure. You cannot avoid not using Len Lennon <laughs> Lennon grad. Okay, closure is this extreme, convol intertwined with Java. You know, I I would love closure except it is in. I talked about this many times in my past videos. I, I would love closure, except it is intentionally intertwined, you know, ingratiating with Java, intertwined, like, like you, you cannot separate them. It intentionally intertwined with the fucking Java in every way. So that you, so, so, you know, so, and, and then that is why you, you drag in, you know, the Leningrad. We haven't started to talk about that yet, but let me finish the, um, we're talking about this guy, um, this guy Technomancy, okay, he is a keyboard expert. He created this keyboard. Uh, anyone remember the name? Type it, okay. I like that. If you know the Atrius, okay, he created this Atrius uh, keyboard, okay. So he's uh, also. So he also Lenogen is written by him, okay. Uh, you know that's a story. So this is a story related to Emacs community. So he's also, of course, a Emacs coder. Uh, I mean e e Emacs user. So anyway, he created Lenogen. So what is Lenogen? Lenogen is this huge bash shell script. Okay, it does many things. I mean, it's it's well done, I would say. Okay, but um, so because for I I did closure intensively for one year. 
because I was working for this David Pollack. He's a great guy, okay? Uh, you know, so he paid me for it. He paid, he paid me, you know, industrial, uh, industrial compens compensation, like, like $80 an hour to code closure and Emacs lease. So I did that for him. That's how I did closure. That, that's how I, you know, wrote this whole closure thing, closure t tutorial. Uh, let me paste that here. Okay, I already did. So Lenagon, so Lenagon is 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 this manage you know package management tool. You can search libraries, you can install it, you can you know manage dependencies. It, it, just like JavaScript uh, 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 RPM, you know it install manages dependencies and all that. Uh, so it's a shell script, you know, it's a bash shell script. Okay, I, I have a tutorial here. You can see all the commands. It's, it does a lot of things, you know, all these, all these commands. Uh, you know, warm start of Java. But the thing is with Java, you know, then you Java is, Java is a complete, complete pain in the ass. Uh, Lenagon. So why are we mentioning Lenagon? Because we are talking about Bash, you know. So so this is an example of where in industry Bash is still used. It's a it's a mainstream. It's a it's kind of necessary. You don't you know. But in my opinion, in my opinion, there's no reason to use Bash. You know, you use GoLang, you use Ruby, you use uh, Python, or even Perl. Uh, you know, you should not use Bash. So we got a lot of comments. So let's so so that concludes my topic about whether we should use Bash or not. Like my opinion about Bash and Shell. You know, don't I, my opinion is don't use it <laughs> unless okay. Another topic. You know, you you were saying uh, who's who said that? Uh, who asked that? Ask his skill, I think. So I think he was saying that he was creating bash script to modify keyboard key bindings, okay? I, I guess in that case you use bash because it's only two lines, you know, you don't it doesn't make sense to use Perl or Python. And, and also in that case in fact, you know, it's yeah, you would use bash. I guess yeah. So um so what I want to say about Linux, yeah, about that. Okay, so I do have a, uh, there's something I want to say about that. Let's go to keyboard uh, software. Let's search for Linux, okay. Uh, so actually, let's go to key binding, search for Linux. There it is. This article. Linux versus Mac versus Windows. Which is best for key binding? Okay. <laughs> Let me talk. Let's talk about that. Okay. This is a g epic story. The tale of Linux. <laughs> the tale of key binding in Linux. Okay. Now, as you know, I'm a keyboard fanatic. You know, I. You know, since back in 1994, 1994, I created use, I created a Vorac layout on the Mac using the tool Rest Edit on the Mac. That's the most popular tool back then. Uh, you know, because back then on the Mac you don't have Vorac. Windows has Vorac built in since 19 since Windows 3.1, I think 1994 or so. But Mac doesn't have it until 1998. Vorac layout. So back, so I started to use Vorac since 1994 by creating a Vorac layout myself. So, you know, I, you know, then, you know, I, I, I also use, you know, in past 30 years, I use Linux, Mac, Windows as my main desktop machine. So I'm familiar, you know, every time I use a, you know, I, I familiar with all the software tools related to key binding on each operating system. So by now, I know which one is more, you know, which operating system with 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 respect to key binding, like customization of keys, 
which operating system is the best, which one is more powerful, which one is easier to use with with respect to you know how to how do you create your own keys and so on. And uh, my conclusion is Linux is the worst, the sucks donkey ass Linux. Fuck Linux. Fuck open source. Fuck free software foundation. Okay, they, that's all related. Okay, that that's all. This con this conclusion about Linux key binding, it's it has to do with all all that I mentioned, open source fanaticism and free software. That's that's the end result. Okay, I'm telling you, trust you know, believe it or not, that's up to you. Okay, I'm telling you my experiences, because you know before I you know I I use Linux as my uh desktop system, uh from nineteen from two thousand about 2011 to 2004 like four years okay maybe 2010 2010 to 2004 I you know I use Linux as my desktop every day you know for four years by the way before I, I was Solaris admin for four years back in year 2000s okay like year 1998 starting there so don't say oh you don't know Linux okay shut up those guys okay <laughs> <laughs> the my first Linux installation is MK Linux on Apple. Apple created MK Linux back in 1997. Look it up, MK Linux. Okay, that's my first Linux installation. But anyway, so I used Linux as my desktop operating system for four years. You know, in, in around 2010. So I thought, you know, the the. The foremost, in, uh, I mean, I thought obviously Lin Linux would provide the most power and the most flexibility when it comes to change your key bindings. Because you know, obviously Linux, you have shell, you have all everything is shell. Okay, everything is a file. You know, the Unix philosophy, everything is a file. Shell script. You have X11. You have configurations for X11. You have, uh, you know, X X. Uh, XMOD map, okay. So I have actually a complete tutorial on Linux key binding. So you know, for example, this is all my. For example, you go to Xar Keyboard Guide. You go to key bindings. Uh, no, you go to software section, and you go to the Linux section. So you got twenty or thirty articles, thirty articles on key binding on Linux. You know how to when when you get into key binding, there are many details. Okay, then you started to discover many. There are different power, different levels of a power. How do how do you define key bindings? For example, some tools can swap keys, but they cannot. If you want, for example, F12 to do Control C, you cannot. Okay, in many tools you cannot. Then that requires a different tool different level of power okay you have many of these kind of issues or for example another example suppose you want for, from from this day on you want every time you want to when you press control T for example you want it to become control F now that's another power okay many gaming software cannot do that okay actually most gaming software cannot do that that's another kind of different level of key binding okay so anyway, I have twenty articles about key binding. You can, so this is a good tutorial. You can learn it. Let me, let me post it here. So, so after today's video on YouTube, you, then you go to YouTube. I'll have this uh, index, or you can see all of, you can see them by going into my website, uh, Ksa Talk Show. Uh, so I have an index of my past videos, and typically, for example, yesterday. I have a list of topics you can you know. So anyway, back to the back to Linux key binding. So what we were talking about, we were talking about this article. So Linux key binding versus Mac and Windows. So I thought you know you would so Linux would be the most powerful and easy to program, especially when you already know Bash or Perl. You know you already know Unix well. It turns out that's not the case. It it turns out Linux is the worst. It's the worst fucking shit. It's not just the worst, okay? Compared compared to Lin uh, Mac or Windows, it's a fucking shit. You know, it, it it's ten times worse, okay? 
if, even you know assume you already know bash scripting you know x11 you know all these technical details it's still 10 times worse the fuck you know fuck the linux people you know all that we hear we have all the you know my friends all you guys every day saying oh linux is better oh microsoft sucks oh linux is better this way that way fuck it's a patent you, you know your brain is is fried by the linux edrc ideology so much that you don't see what you don't understand you don't see the real world anymore okay now i'm 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 pretty sure you guys disagree okay if you disagree post post your reasons okay let other people judge you know i'm not going to ban anything okay I, i'm not like the linux fuckheads and the 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 emacs fuckheads they ban every time you say something disagreeable like you if you criticize richard stoneman on reddit they ban you okay same thing with the linux fuckheads they ban you right away i don't ban okay you you if you disagree with my opinion post it okay let other people judge so it, it is my opinion that linux sucks donkey ass and i learned it this i learned this the hard way okay so i'm a i'm a key binding fanatic so i look for answers like I, I want to you know i want to do weird things i want to make you know control f becomes f2 okay I, I do this you know weird things so every step you know every step of the way i learn it you know i spend hours going to you know stack overflow you don't you don't get much answers on stack overflow you you go to the arc linux that's the best place arc linux they have a wiki okay you know you they they they, they focus on linux tech details anyway I you know so I spent hours hours every day <laughs> for, for for four years this or that every day fucking fuck Linux. Then eventually I learned you know if you want to do that this is how you do it. If you want to do that this is how you do it. If you want to you know do this you have to install this tool or that you know so all these are detailed here in this you know my tutorial about Linux key binding. <sighs> and so, so you know here's my result that's my conclusion okay. So on the Mac, on, on, on Windows, for example, on Windows, what is the solution on, win, on Windows? Let me tell you. So you go to software on Windows. Windows, you know, they have their own ways. You know, I'm not into li uh, Windows, okay? I don't like Windows. Why? I don't like, I don't like big corporations. I like the, the non, non, you know, I like the, I like the grassroots. I like the people. I like the freedom people like you guys like the Linux fanatics and open source fanatics freedom people I like that's me that's you know I'm the part of, that's why I'm in this community I don't like Microsoft I don't, okay I, I I used Microsoft as my uh, desktop for like three years before Linux I that's that's how you know I used for four years I switched to Linux as my desktop so back so my my lead uh, Windows is my main operating system from about 2009 or 2008 to 2011, something like that. Okay, Windows is my main desktop. I use it every day, you know, do everything. So on Windows, they have their community, you know, their world. I never got into, you know, I thought when I switched to Windows, I thought, you know, okay, I'm going to become, <laughs> you know, I'm going to learn all the Windows details, you know, the registry, that never actually happened, you know, I don't, I just, I don't, it doesn't happen, didn't happen with me, okay, but anyway, on key, for key binding stuff, I learned, basically, there are many tools, but basically, you just use this one tool, auto hot key. Okay, I, so I have I have a complete tutorial, you know, on auto hot key. Uh, so okay, let me post it here. So so auto so on Windows, you just use auto hot key. That that basically solves all your key binding needs. Basically all. Okay. Yeah, as opposed as opposed to Linux, you have to oh this tool, uh this tool that tool X11 config, you know for example X11 whatever you do in X11 that's only for X11, that doesn't work. For example, if you want to switch to Vorac, but that only works for X11. Once but if you are in in, in you know 
on Linux, you have the you know the boot up, the boot up screen. You you have you know you have the single user mod. Then that's not Vorac. Okay, so if you want Vorac on that, then it's some other thing. It's some other fucking config. It's very it's very complicated, and, and that config you cannot just. You know, is for example, let me show you one of the complexity of Linux. Okay, so so if you want Vorac everywhere, not just in X11, you have to do uh, system keyboard layout. Okay, you have to sudo dpkg reconfigure keyboard configuration. You have to install that. Fuck. You have to install that. Fuck. And the, the technical mechanism is in act default keyboard. Okay. <laughs> So that's another config file you have to dig into, and don't make mistakes. If you make a mistake in that in that, in those files, you fucked up. You boot up, then you don't know what where your keys go. You fuck up. Okay, then <laughs> then what you gonna solve that? I don't know. It's gonna be, you know, the grub boot. You know, you go to into grub and you know, whatever. You know, I don't know how to solve that. That's gonna be another five hours. <laughs> five hours gun for that. Don't make mistake, okay? <laughs> so that's about that's about how you change Vorac layout on on on, on Linux, okay? And by, and by the way, also different distri di different dis Linux dis distribution, uh, they may or may not be different depending on what you want to do. For this one, I suppose I'm guessing it's universal, but you can never be sure because every distro they do their own things. They fuck fuck the Linux share. Uh, Fanatics, the open source fuck. You know why? I, I mentioned this many times. Why they do that? Because they all want their own power. You know, on the surface they are all sharing. You know, we are all one. You know, one word for better humanity. But actually, no, that's not the reason. That's not the case. Okay, so that's about Linux. And what about Mac? On the it turns out. Okay, uh, let me go back to the article. Linux versus Mac versus Windows, which is best for key binding? It turns out Mac is the easiest by far, by far, by far, by you know, by 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 uh, Mac, Mac magnitude. Okay, on the Mac, like right now, I'm using. If you want to change key binding, doesn't matter how esoteric. One, you know, there are many tools on the Mac. Okay. So I have, you know, I have also a complete tutorial about Mac key binding. So you go to software, uh, you go to, you know, I have ten pages, ten pages about all everything you want to know about key binding on the Mac. And the first article shows several tools for the Mac. You know, over the past thirty years, they they come and go. You know, for for five years, this tool is the best. Then some other tools come up. You know. Anyway, on the Mac today, you just go install Carabiner, okay? You, you just install that. It does everything you need, uh, you know. And it's GUI, and also it, uh, you know. Anyway, they how they do it changes be, because Carabiner also went, you know. They have different versions, you know. Mac changes, you know. Mac OS change versions, and also they anyway. On the Mac, it's the most easy. Okay, you just you just use install Carabiner. Basically, you get all you need, all the, all, all the things you need. Okay, that's that's my rant about you know Linux and about Mac versus Windows versus uh, Linux. Uh, how with respect to key binding. So today's topic, we talked about these things. We talked about. In, you know, we talk about encryption, cryptography, ciphers, ROT13 ciphers. We talked about Learn Perl. We talked about Learn Ruby. Uh, we talked about Ruby RVM, how it sucks because of the, you know, um, what well, we talked about shell scripts. And we talked about Linogan and Clojure uh, and tech Technomancy guy. He created Atrius keyboard. Then, so that's that's. I think that's basically today. That's one hour. So maybe we talk about ten or twenty minutes more. So if you have questions, put my name into it. So I'm gonna read the comments and address all the questions.
and I need a drink. Today's drink cranberry, cranberry with raspberry, a mega ton. Cranberry plus raspberry. Okay, if you have questions, address to me. Okay, make it orange colored so I can see it. Like type Xali, you know my uh, my name. Okay, let's let me uh, read the comments, answer questions. So let me read my name first. So we're gonna do OOP. We, let's continue doing OOP tomorrow. Okay, if you are here, bathroom will. Yeah, next time you are, if you are, you know, in my video, say it. Uh, you know, then we do that. <laughs> yeah. So next time, yeah, next time we do that. Uh. So Kathy, where you from? If you don't mind, tell us. Like, are you in China or? Are you uh, somewhere else? So Beth, uh, so yes, but that pearl is easier to splash. Uh, there are plans. So Battle says there are plans, consideration to rebrand Pearl Six as a new, different language, and Pearl Five, Pearl Seven, <laughs> and Pearl Five as Pearl Seven, so that there is no misconception that Pearl Five is old. Or not develop anymore. Pearl Seven, I haven't heard of Pearl Seven. You know, I think Pearl is dead. Forget about Pearl Six. I mean, there are some, there are always people that are fans of some language. Okay, phonetics. Like you know, every time, you know, now and then I mention Pearl in social media, like on Twitter or or Mastodon, because I coded. You know, I was a Pearl expert. You know. Then people, then we, there will be pearl people, you know. They don't exist anywhere, anywhere, anywhere. They don't exist. I mean, there, but there are a few, like one people. But every time they, they're just, you know, they, they'll say on social media, then they think, you, you might think, oh, there are a lot of pearl people, but they don't exist anymore. Pearl people, de pearl is dead, okay. But anyway, they are, you know, these fanatics, they say, they'll say, oh, you need to learn Pearl 6. Pearl 6 is so great. And they are, you know, doing this or that. Same thing, you know, this happens in every language. Haskell, Julia, you know, Haskell is going to tell you, oh, you need to learn Haskell category theory. It's a future. It's a future, guys. Haskell is a future, guys. Proof. <laughs> you know, every program in the future, every software is going to be 100 proof, 100% uh, proved, you know, math system that's written in Haskell. <laughs> it's a <the> future. <laughs> then Julia and the Rust. Oh my God, Rust people, Rust, Rust. You know what? You know what? I don't like Rust. Okay, Rust, Rust belong to the community of C, C, uh, C. Okay, C hackers, Unix philosophy. Those type of people, they like Rust, and they, it's a big thing. Rust, you know, they'll tell you, "Oh, you gotta." What do you think of Rust? You need to use Rust. Okay, I don't like it. I don't like it because it's not my type. It's not my style. Because Rust, Rust, they focus on low level stuff like memory, like memory stuff, rem memory references, int, float, fuck. I don't like. I don't like those. They they focus on compiler stuff. You know. The, the 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 same kind of thing the Unix people the C coders they that they like okay I don't like those I I like functional programming I like high level I like proof proof systems in a sense I like Haskell okay but but Haskell is kind of pop so I kind of <laughs> I, anyway so so that's my not my thing but is it good I I guess Rust is good you know uh you know it's a new language in general. Like new newer languages are better. Go, goes by ten years. Every decade, you know, if if two language two language they differ by by ten years, in general, the later ones are better. So you know, so if you you know if you are a Rust fan, that's that's good. Um, then people tell you learn Julia. Then you know th things like that. People always tell you to do. Uh, 
uh, you know, f that's uh, language fanatism, of course. Uh, so that is not a drink. <laughs> okay, so but for me it's a drink, and also plus added the uh, cheap energy drink, sugar free. Um, question: How do you split screen vertical with stuff stuff like this? Vertical? That's easy. What do you mean? Okay, so you press uh, the the key. You know, you press one key to switch window. So for me, on on Vorac keyboard, I by the way, I also have my own customization. So the key you see here may not be what you type. I, you know. So anyway, so I press one key to split top and bottom, and and uh, if I want uh, vertical, I I press space four. Okay. That's what you mean, right? Space four, okay. One key, uh, okay. Space four, no more, uh, okay. No more split. Then vertical, no more split. A uh, vertical, no more split. <laughs> you know, this is this is the E Rex. Let's see. Uh, vertical split. Uh, wait. Um, and vertical. Okay. So there it is. E Max. And let's run calc. So I got a calculator. Wait, what? Okay, let's run calc here. So three, three plus three and four, enter plus. Now that's how you do uh, three plus four. It's a post polish notation. Okay, now. I can tell you about the history of that notation and the gen in general the history of notations. <laughs> That's another topic. <laughs> Post polish notation. Uh, uh, you abbreviate uh, it as RPM. A uh, reverse polish notation. That's what you call it. Reverse polish notation. Then let's show calendar here. Calendar. Okay. Oh, so we got calendar. We have calculator. And let's see. Let's show hexamod. Hex. Uh, hexamod. Uh, hexamod format is got undo. Yes. Yes. Oh, just <laughs> shit! It turns everything into hexamod. Okay. So now I need to switch buffers. So now I go here, switch to a buffer. Now let's show all my buffers here, and over here, let's do e shell. E shell, great E shell. Let's uh, do E shell. Then over here, let's uh, go to diet, and over here, let's go to diet and go to a image directory, and let's show a image. Okay. Then we need to. Ah, uh, God! I need to. I need to shrink the image size. Okay, image decrease size. Okay, so. Yeah. Uh, how do you decrease image size? Let's sh let's show another picture then. Okay, so there, there it is the, the phantasmagorical Emacs, the power of Emacs. Okay, back to comments. Uh, what we, what were we talking about? Yeah, that's how you split windows vertical. So I think it's space four. Um, yeah, pro is uh, why do you use ugly screen? Why do you use that ugly screen? What ugly green? Oh, you think this green is ugly? <laughs> now this color is called honey drew. Okay, by the way, this color. For example, let's let's back to Emacs. Uh oh, we we got a what? Uh, let's see. Okay, so we got a new window. Uh, by the way, this this article is about those are uh, computer scientists. They 
uh, John Hennessy and David Patterson. They they wrote a they oh they designed Risk Chip. I think they they designed a Risk uh, CPU. So anyway, I wanted to show. Oh yeah, so new buffer. Uh, so actually, go to my Emacs init. Oh, that's not not it. And let's go to key binding. My Emacs key binding customization. So this file is my Emacs key binding customization. Go to diet. That's a file, and uh, every file in this directory is my Emacs init. Now I let's delete those backups. I don't want it. Delete them. Yes. Then go to uh, settings. Okay. Now this file is the most fundamental settings, meaning that you don't need any packages. Excuse me. <coughs> like, like every setting in this file can run from a you know from a fresh Emacs without you know installing packages. So they, these are the, the most basic uh, setup such as background color for example you see this so you see this block of code and you see this line of code background color honey drew okay that's how you that's this color that's <laughs> that's not ugly green my friend israel <laughs> you, you know people have asked me how do, how how do you know like what what color theme you do you use i don't use any color theme i don't like color themes you know, I don't like those all those color themes. Fuck, fuck color themes. I want my user interface to be the most ugly possible, because I'm a functional person. You know, I'm one hundred percent functionality person. I don't want coloring stuff. I want I don't want pretty fuck. You see, and you see many Emacs fanatics. They think they are functional. You know, for example, you go to Emacs, you know, Reddit forum. You know, you go to Emacs mailing list or forum. A lot of these Emacs people, they will, you know, they are like going extreme. They 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 say they tell you, oh, you should use Emacs in shell. Like, um, <laughs> let me show you. No window. Like for example, let's 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 do. Uh, Let's start Emacs, uh, Emacs dash Q and uh, dash NW. That means no, no, uh, no windowing system. So this is the, this is Emacs in shell. You know, so you go to the Emacs forum, they, they, they're going to tell you, oh, you should use Emacs this way <laughs> because they saw that. And they say, and they say, oh, you should remove, you see the scroll bar I have here? Many Emacs people they tell you to oh you should remove scroll bar because this or that because they they are idiots okay I'm telling you they are they are inefficient idiots they are doing they they are they are inefficient inefficient you know you want to talk you know you want to talk about efficiency I'm the master you know I'm I'm not a great programmer I'm not the great Emacs Lisp coder there are a lot of people know Emacs Lisp better than me you know I'm not you know, I'm. <laughs> I you know, if you ask my own opinion of myself, I'm not a great programmer. I I'm not even a good uh, mathematician because uh, you know I don't know. I, at, at best, at best, I'm a. I have I'm a I have equivalent to an undergr undergraduate degree of math. That's the most you can say about what I know of math. Okay, but there are a few things I could say I'm a master, and they are not very much there are not many in the world okay one is efficiency about key bindings about yeah key keyboard key binding efficiency issues okay i would be the master you 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 will not find uh, many you know in the world and and uh, i'm also the master who has been sitting in front of a computer like right now in the in, in in one chair over 20 years span of time if you take statistical average i would be the top within top 1000 in the world probably okay <laughs> sitting you know you measure the hours sitting in front of a chair i am I'm a master of that okay back to the emacs stuff okay so 
so many of these Emacs nerds, okay, they think they are efficient, you know, be, that's not true, okay, they, they think they are. Actually, what they are is, they, they are just into, they are into whatever is more difficult, whatever is more, seems more nerdy, more men, you know, whatever is more difficult they like, and they think that's more efficient, that's, you know, that's what, that's what they are. And also, a lot of them, they are, they are telling you, okay, don't ever use a mouse, that's idiotic, okay? Use the mouse. I use the mouse in Emacs. And the only purpose, the only, uh, the only, uh, the, the only time, the only function I use mouse in Emacs is for scroll. Is for scrolling buffer like right now, okay? Why, why do I use the mouse for that? Because that turns out for my, you know, years of study research, this is the most efficient. And this is the most appropriate uh, application of a mouse when it comes to Emacs. Use use the mouse to scroll, okay? Now I'm not, that, that's another topic because I can go into details. You, I can talk about a, a mouse scroll wheel acceleration in Emacs or outside of Emacs in Mac, Linux, Windows, how they, you know, do they have acceleration? That's another topic. I can talk about one hour about that. I have, <laughs> I have articles, in, you know, on my website on that. Just search for Xa, Xa Li uh, mouse acceler acceleration or Xa Li Emacs mouse okay you find the articles anyway so i'm telling you those emacs phonetics okay they they think you know that they are kind of the mainstream in emacs community you know they tell you to remove the score bar they tell you to remove the buttons that i agree okay the the you know you have the bunch of buttons like copy paste at the top then they also tell you to remove Emacs menus, okay? That's all idiotic, okay? They think, they, you know, they are, if you ask them why, they, they, they're going to tell you, oh, because this is, more, this is more efficient. No, it's not, okay? Uh, and also, they tell you to never use the mouse. That's also wrong, okay? Use the mouse. Because <laughs> I say it's use the mouse. What do you use the mouse for? For scroll. Not for, like, selecting or, you know, right-click, you know, <laughs> not not that okay that's what they think that's what they think when they they say don't use the mouse they think you are going to you know use the mouse to select you know like um let me uh turn off the autos click okay they are thinking they are tell you know when they think you know don't use the mouse they are thinking oh uh you you know don't use you know they are use yeah they are thinking you use the mouse to select things like that like that don't do that okay I use a mouse, and basically the only uh, situation is scroll the scroll the window, and also sometimes uh, switch window. Because okay, that's that's detail. Okay, I I have auto I have auto click. Like right now, I don't um, I showed this before. I don't click. Like you see my hand and my mouse, my keyboard. I don't click. Like I move the cursor here. You know, I switched window already, so I don't, I don't click. Okay, I don't, I don't auto, I have auto click, and if sometimes, in some situations, you don't want auto click. For example, when you are in Google Map or Google Earth. Okay, in that case, I move the uh, mouse to the right, right left corner, right uh bottom corner. Then the auto click is now off. Now I have to click. Now I have to click to switch. You see, click. So auto click is fantastic. I have an article on that. Okay, I, you know you can go read it. Anyway, so I was saying, you know, those people, they 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 don't think they are not think they don't think. Okay, because just like the just like people who watch TV, you you stop thinking. You don't know what things mean anymore. Why are they like that? Why, why are they suggesting don't use the mouse and turn off the score bar or turn off menu? Because that's uh, mainstream. You know, that's mainstream in the Emacs community for back in 30 years ago. Like every every nerd is say, saying it. You know, they, and they see it every day on Reddit, on Hacker News. You know, they, they see it every day and they just follow it. They never, you know, they never actually spend one hour to actually research, like, you know, from scratch. You know, when should you use the mouse? What's the, you know, they, they never do anything of that. They, they are idiotic, okay? 
So every time I have opinions, like I post my opinions, they ban, they ban me. <laughs> you know, this has been happening you know, since 20 years ago. They're going to ban you. That's, and this is also why they are forever in this cult. You know, it's a cult. You only see what, you, you know, you only see these kind of opinions. It's forever, you know, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, you live in this Emacs bubble. Every op other opinion is banned. You know, they shut it down. These open source Linux fuckheads. That's why I, I despise. I, I, uh, I hate them. Uh, that, you know, let's say I don't hate the people. You know, let's let's remember that. Not the people. It's just just the the their the opinion. The way they you know the opinion. Okay, not the people. Because some of these people, you know, some of some some of them, they are some bad guys. Okay, they don't like me because I criticize, you know, I criticize Linux, Emacs, uh, Richard Stallman. Then they don't, they not Then then it's like politics. You do war, you know. They then they every time they see my name, they say bad things. They say, oh, Xali never coded, you know, one line of Emacs. List. There are people like that on Hacker News. They're this fuckhead called List. His handle is LispM, okay, which stands for Lisp Machine. On Hacker News, you can look up. Every time he sees my name mentioned, he'll say bad things. Now it's kind of you know in the in the past few years it's getting better because because the social justice rise. So on Hacker News, you cannot you know uh, criticize people because then people will ban you. You know so they, and also because I started to do videos, I become more. You know, people see see my actual face. You know, my I explain myself. You know, so there's more understanding. But but he used to like every time he see my name, he'll say, you know, he said, you know, for example, five six years ago, he said, Xali never coded one line of Lisp. All all he does is copy paste others' code, and he said that. Uh, you know, and back then I was you know seven years ago in two thousand. Uh, 12 uh 2012 around there there you know i was going to die i don't have money i don't have money to eat you know hunger i suffer hunger i mean not not just like <laughs> literal hunger for like you know on and off for a year okay i want to i'm hungry i need to eat buy a banana a banana is 25 cents i don't have 25 cents and and i'm hungry you know, that it's not like, oh, if you don't eat banana, why don't you uh, go eat uh, beef? <laughs> and at, at that time, so I, you know, that's a crisis. And, you know, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a nerd. So I sometimes you, you feel strange. You look, look at yourself, you know, you, you know, apparently, you know, well, how did you get into that situation? I don't know. Okay, some, sometimes these things happen. That's another topic. But anyway, back then, so he posted, you know, he posts, you know, he just, uh, he tells people, you know, don't, don't, don't donate. You know, it's good that Ksar, you know, he's going to die. That's a good thing. That's, that's something like, they are like a couple of people who says that, two or three. Uh, they are, you know, Ksar haters. So anyway, so that's, we talked about lots of things. So I think maybe that's it for today. Uh, so I, you know, I was talking about the Emacs fanatics. I'm flaming their technical, you know, their code, their, you know, their, their mantras. You know, they they have these things they want to. Um, anyway, so how long I have I been talking? So let's see. Oh, stuff like keys. Actually, there's a question here. Ah, that's too late for today. I was going to talk about that. Uh, so one hour and 23 minutes. Okay, two more minutes, I guess. In the past few days, it's I'm doing like 90 minutes talk. So Battle says, um, I see you are using normal mouse. Aren't you into trackballs? Yes. I have Logitech MS, MX Ergo and I like it very much. Yes, I tried that. One of my friend has that. Um, right now I'm not on, on, on a trackball. I used to like, um, I used to have two, like one is trackball, but 
ideally I would like you know f first of all I need to buy it you know I don't have much money so I'm I'm much better now but I don't have, I can't just I, I cannot just go buy a trackball I would like like to uh, so trackball is pretty good but if I can only choose one mouse or trackball I think that would be mouse because anyway that's that's another topic because I can I can talk for one hour about that so let's talk about that next time uh, those are people and that's not really related to you that's always few people criticize anything uh, okay so face face is subject in pretty must be on YouTube Huh? <laughs> what are you saying, Israel? So by the way, Israel also runs a YouTube. Israel runs a Emacs uh, tutorial, and sometimes live coding on YouTube. So <laughs> check it out. Uh, Israel, Israel has been one day, a, a few months ago, Israel has been chatting with me on one of my videos. Uh, okay, so I think that's it. Hey, John Lewis, John Lewis, haven't seen you for a while. Great to see you. <laughs> uh, you don't read my funny comments. Where's the funny comments? Because you know, usually when I'm talking on video and there's a lot of comments, I cannot, you know, I cannot focus on which is which who said what and uh, you know usually I get confused you know so Israel says you should plug my channel oh, okay now I see it new video on Python okay and using nice theme okay so let's check out what's Israel's latest doing uh, YouTube now his channel has a name it's called Emacs something okay but <laughs> I forgot what's the something so let's just search for YouTube Y I S R A E L Do okay uh, Israel Dove YouTube there it is oh I need my auto click back okay so you see auto click is it saves you click you know it's actually much good but you but the thing with auto click is that you have to get get used to it because if you just try it now you'll get frustrated you have to actually spend like a week to get used to it so here is Israel's channel and uh, Emacs is great okay that's the uh, uh, name episode 43 uh, PHP now I know <laughs> now Israel is a open source Free software or free software foundation fanatic. Okay, we dis we disagree on that. Uh, so anyway, th there it is, Israel's uh, YouTube channel. So so you know even you know even I don't you know I don't agree with many of the free software and open source, but 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 still mostly I'm an open source and free software guy because almost every every software almost okay every software I use is f open source and I when I look for software I always look for open source well partly because there's nothing you can do right now because right now you know Google and and Microsoft they are all doing you know open source is becomes the mainstream it's like you cannot escape it like whenever you deviate from mainstream doesn't matter what subject what topic emacs config or or even with, even if you are using emacs or not or go to mainstream such as atom or slime you know any anything you know or even a lifestyle like what, how how you're going to be every time you deviate from mainstream you are going to run into a uh, little conven inconveniences here and there you know that's just the the thing you know there's nothing you can do every time you deviate from mainstream for example if you use class emacs well if in a company everyone is using using microsoft visual studio or whatever you know microsoft code or or atom you know they, those are become popular you know then you are the one man out 
you run into problems you know to you emacs is great yeah I, yeah but then in you know if for example in 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 what whatever you call the the, the agile you know the two guys coding together it becomes a problem because he's using he don't know emacs you know you have little of these problems then you have to explain things or then there's pressure for you to not use Emacs because everyone else is using Microsoft Visual Studio or you know Slime or whatever Sublime not Slime <laughs> Sublime Slime is the Emacs Lisp package anyway so yeah and if you have a different lifestyle like me don't watch TV don't have a TV for 20 years you're gonna be odd you're gonna be a bit odd because oh that guy he always you know you yeah so that so so in the same way now open source you know it's kind it's kind of like this open source by the way let me mention open source is the mainstream you know it's not like this freedom niche group no open source is the mainstream it's 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 sponsored by microsoft love it you know you should think you should love microsoft sponsored by google uh sponsored by apple apple you know apple computers apple the these these companies each has 1000 patent lawyers yeah open source uh and what are you gonna do what are you gonna do uh you know, so anyway, anyway, so that's it for today. And uh, what else? Uh, let's see. Um, Pro, uh, that is not a drink. Okay, so I, I, I think I answered all comments. Okay, so I think that's it for today. Uh, it's 90 minutes, uh, I think. Yeah, so that's it for today. Thank you guys for coming. Uh, yeah, bye guys. Farzin says... <laughs> Don't close my channel. Kathy, thank you, Kathy, for coming by. Uh, great to see you, Israel battles guys fever jean louis panos fuzzy jean louis use fever yeah oh yeah one thing i want to mention is that israel introduced me many great open source software for example uh, if you want to uh, do video chat with your friend israel showed me several you know like one or two great post it okay israel post it <laughs> like you have you have 10 seconds to post the link you know the the like you know follow israel okay or ask ask israel so he showed me several great open source software that does you know video chat or or uh or text chat i i forgot the name actually you know i want to use them but i got so other i got many other things so i you know so I, that's why i didn't so anyway bye guys